everyone. I'm Max Pinnell. I'm the ESG lead at Envision Blockchain, and today we're going to be demoing the IREC and the Guardian. Just some general concepts of renewable energy certificates. So once energy is transmitted to the grid, it becomes indistinguishable from other energy sources. So in order to track renewable energy generation and consumption, the IREC was introduced so that generators of renewable energy can have their generation certified, they can receive certificates, and uh, consumers can purchase and retire certificates in order to lower their scope two emissions. So the IREC is an international standard for renewable energy certificates, and that was started by the IREC Standard Foundation, and individual product codes are applied in conjunction with this standard for specific products and markets. So the IREC-E is the product code for electricity products, and it was developed by Evident. Here's a quick summary of the different roles involved in the IREC, but in, for this demo, we're going to pay close attention to participants, registrants, and issuers. Participants are account holders who can hold and trade renewable energy certificates. Registrants are electricity generating facilities wishing to be issued RECs, and issuers are government or independent entities that issue the, the RECs. There's also other roles such as infrastructure operators, code managers, labeling authorities, and the IREC Standard Foundation, which accred accredits entities. So generally how it works, attributes of generator facilities, such as the energy source or the location, are captured at registration. They generate renewable energy, and the generation volume is verified. IRECs are issued uh, according to how much volume has been generated, and those are linked to those attributes. So you can think about it at a high level in terms of attributes like energy source and location and generation volume in kilowatt hours or megawatt hours are the main things that we're dealing with here. And then once RECs are issued, they can be held, traded, or redeemed to lower emissions. And the redeemer will be the beneficiary who's allowed to claim the attributes of that electricity, such as uh, a company can retire one megawatt of renewable energy from solar and claim that they consume that amount of solar at, let's say, a zero metric ton of CO2 equivalent per kilowatt hour emission rate. So this is the general workflow for, for IREC-E. Basically, registrants, they submit an application to the issuer. The issuer processes the application, then the registrant registers a facility slash a device. There may be an inspection for this demo. Usually there's not an inspection necessary. Issuers process the registration and then registrants submit a, an issue request along with independently verified meter data. And then the issuers process the issue request and IREX are issued. For the registrant and participant application, this is the form that's sent to the issuer, basically capturing some general details of the entity and the contacts of that entity. The facility and device registration, that is where attributes are captured, such as the location, and most importantly, the energy source and technology. Solar devices can be grouped. This is an example of the group registration form. And then this is the issue request form, which will have the production period, the generation volume, and this will be issued along with the MRV data, which would be this schema right here, which generally consists of uh, time-stamped meter readings. For this demo, this, this MRV data is being sent manually by the user, but ideally this MRV data can be sent through verified meters that are IoT enabled that can send this MRV data directly on chain. And now I'll kick it over to Dan to demo the IREC and the Guardian. Thanks, Max. So we begin the IREC demo by logging into the registrant's account. We can navigate over to the Policy tab. And the registrant will have to select the role, of course, which is going to be registrant. And then they're going to be able to fill out the registrant application. Keep in mind that we're quickly filling this application out with the script that you're not going to see but it's going to send it out in one shot. Once submitted, the registrant will be waiting for the IREC's approval of that form. 
the registrant will then associate the IREC token to their account and then we can log in to the issuer's account which is IREC for this example. At this step they can review the registrant's application and either approve or reject it. In this case we're going to approve it to keep the demo moving forward. They will also perform the KYC. Please keep in note that in the real life scenario the KYC may be performed by another role such as evident. Once the application is approved, as per the workflow that Max described earlier, we're going to log back into the registrant's account and we're going to register a new device for sending MRV data. This will need to be approved by IREC. We can see that now we're waiting for approval for IREC. So we're going to log back into the IREC account. We're going to go into the device tab. We're going to be able to review the device registration and approve or reject it. Also note that there may be an inspection of the device which isn't captured in this demo. We will now log back into the registrant's account. At this step, we're going to manually enter the needed data for the IREC token issuance. Keep in mind that in the future there will be a demo that will automate this process and simulate a live IoT device that will be sending data along with other sources of existing data that will need to be completed in order to satisfy this specific IREC policy workflow step. But again, we're going to be manually entering this data for this demo. Notice how after submitting the data, the registrant is waiting for the approval from IREC. We're going to log back into the IREC account. And we're going to navigate into the issue requests, where at this point, IREC can review the MRV data and they can either approve it or reject it, which at this point, this is going to trigger the token issuance. Now that the token issuance is complete, we're going to log back into the registrant account and we're gonna take a look at the token history tab. You will notice how there it's listed all the serials of the NFTs that were issued by IREC. We can also see the token balance that is reflected in the registrant's token balance. For extra confirmation of the Mint event, we will log into the IREC account and we will click into the token history tab. Over there we will see the same NFT serials that were listed in the registrant's account. Lastly, we will navigate to the trust chain for an easier way to view everything that happened that led to the token issuance. There you will see all the VCs that are compiled and accumulated within the verifiable presentation. And you will be able to see all the VCs again that were part of this policy workflow. Thanks for watching and let us know if you have any questions.